You are very welcome to this SEO for Beginners course, where I am going to demystify this often intimidating topic and show how you can profit from it. Hi, my name is Dara. I'm an SEO freelancer. And I think the best way for us to kick off this course is for you to understand the goal of search engine optimization or SEO as it's known for short. Now, the goal of SEO is very, very simple. You want to get to the first page of Google. And the reason is, is because 95% of all web traffic goes to sites on the first page of the Google SERPs, meaning the Google search results. So if you can get on the first page of Google, you're going to get a lot more visitors to your website, which means a lot more sales for you and a lot more money in your pocket. And if you can get to the first position on the first page, you can get 33% of all of the search traffic for a particular search term. And the great thing is, is if you can get to the top spot, you can stay there for weeks, months, even years. And that means that Google is going to be sending you a ton of free traffic 24 seven, three, six, five. So this is why SEO is so exciting, why everybody wants to learn about it and why it's such a highly paid and in demand marketing skills, simply because it can deliver such a great return on investment and a ton of free traffic to your site. So that's really the goal of search engine optimization. Get to the first page, get to the top spot on Google. And then the next lecture, we're going to break down the simple steps to enable you to get there. I'll see you there. In this lecture, I want to show you that SEO is actually not that complicated. If you want to get to the top of the search results, you just need to do three simple things. The first thing is keyword research. Now keywords are simply the words or phrases that you type into Google. For example, you might search for desktop microphone or best drone for kids. These are the keywords or the keyword phrases. And typing something into Google is something you probably do without thinking. But if you want to get traffic from the search engines, you need to know what your potential customers are searching for. And this is why we need to do keyword research. The great news is that there are a ton of free and easy to use tools out there that can put a ton of data at our fingertips. And we can even see the search volume for every single keyword. And I'll be showing you how to use these tools in the keyword research section of the course. But knowing what your customers are searching for is only the first step. The second step is optimization. And optimization really just means making sure that Google can understand what keywords that you are targeting, what products or services you're selling and where you're selling them. That's optimization. And it's absolutely no coincidence that in our example here, you can see that what I search for appears in the title, description and URL of the web page. And you optimize your content around these keywords like this in the admin area of your website. And I'll be showing you how to do that in the on page optimization section of this course. Now, the third and final step is to build authority. Just updating your keywords on your website is not going to be enough for you to get to the first page of Google. You also need to build authority and show Google that you have the best content for their users. And the way that you build authority is by creating such compelling content that people are sharing it across the social networks and linking to it from around the internet. Google takes a look at this and says, whoa, if so many people are linking to it and sharing it across the web, it must be great. And as a result, they rank you a lot higher in these search results. And in the off page optimization section of the course, I'll be showing you how you can get valuable links also known as backlinks. So you can appear much higher in the search results. So that's SEO. Well, in a nutshell, of course, and over the rest of this Udemy course, I'm going to be showing you the steps to do keyword research, optimize your site for the search engines and build authority around that content. So you can get to the top of the search results. Already in this course, you've learned that the first step to get to the top of the search results is to do some keyword research. And that's why in this lecture, I want to show you how to install and use 
a very simple to use and free keyword research tool called Keywords Everywhere. I really love this tool and actually gave it a great recommendation, which you can see is actually featured on the home page here. I've no other association with this tool other than that, that I like it, but I really like it because it's free, it's easy to use, and uh, you don't require any credit card sign up or any stuff like that, which actually you do need to do for other tools like the Google Keyword Planner, which used to be the best default tool to use keyword research, but unless you're willing to put a credit card behind it, it's not that helpful, and it actually restricts a lot of data unless you're spending money on AdWords. So that's why I really recommend this Keywords Everywhere tool. Now, before I show you how to install it, although that is a fairly straightforward process, I just wanna show you how I use it and some of the benefits that I really see of it. So I've already got the tool installed because I wanna show it to you first. So let's say I come into Google, I might have an e-commerce store selling microphones and I wanna do some keyword research. So what I can just do is type in microphone. And uh, when I've got the tool installed, what you're gonna notice here is this little line appearing underneath the search bar. And the most interesting thing here is the search volume. So I know immediately when I type in microphone here that, that microphone gets searched on Google globally 368,000 times per month. So that gives me an idea straight away of the size of the microphone market on Google, which is amazingly interesting to know. But if you want to do some keyword research, you, you need to start to understand what else are people searching for. And one of the great things that you can do is if you scroll down to the bottom of the page here, you can see these uh, searches related to microphones and also all of the search volume is appearing next to this. So now I can see microphones for recording, micro wireless microphones. What is a condenser microphone? Microphones for computers, types of microphones. So all of these keywords are pages on my website that I could create, blog posts, or just have specific sections on my website dedicated to microphones for recording, etc. dynamic microphones. And actually, you'll have a much better chance of getting to the top of the search results for these longer keyword phrases than just an individual term like microphone. You can do this process for literally anything, say drones, I can come down here, I can see that gets out 1.5 million searches per month. So very popular, maybe more popular than we can see microphones. And we can come down here and we can see drones, DJI, drones, Amazon, etc., etc. So the cool thing about this is if you see keywords that you like as you're going through your day um, and just searching on Google as you normally do, what you can start to do is build up a list of keywords. And that's really the first step in your keyword research, just building up a list. And they have this really cool feature here that you can just click this little star and it's gonna add that keyword to your list. So I'm gonna add this one in drones here. I can come down a little bit further and say drones DGI, uh, military drones, drones Phantom 4, that's a very specific thing. And so what I can do now is click on the little icon here in my browser, you can see keywords everywhere. That's gonna pop up, I can look at my favorite keywords. And what I can see now is a list of all of those keywords that I've collected very naturally, this is not a weird process because you're very used to doing this already on Google. You probably come in here 10, 15 times a day. If they're keywords that you like and you go, hey, actually that could be a pretty good blog article. Or if you look up how to uh, edit Camtasia or how to create it, I don't know, whatever. You can just add those to your list. You can build them up here. You can export them all if you want. You can copy them send them to an Excel, you can bring them offline, do whatever you want, but very naturally, without a lot of effort and thinking, you can build up a lot of keywords, you can turn those keywords into blog posts, videos, etc. So that is what I really like about this tool. You, it's right there, every time you're searching in Google, the figures come straight up, and also you could get all that information for the suggested ones down here as well. So you can go in and really search for, you know, anything as you're going through your day. And 
I've found it's it's really opened my mind up to a load of opportunities, even business opportunities. For example, I was reading an article on this company who make ferry doors. I thought this was a completely bizarre idea. And you can see it gets over four, 40,000 searches per month, which means that's a big business. That's a big niche if you want to do that. So this keyword research is not only interesting for looking at maybe types and topics of content you can make, but also whole business ideas. And I just think it's an essential tool for anybody who's serious about marketing or business online in general. So how do you get this amazing information for free in your browser? Well, it's very, very simple. You just need to go to keywordseverywhere.com. I'll put the link in the resources section of this video. This is a browser extension, so it's going to be added into Chrome or Firefox. It's just available on these two, two browsers. If you don't have those, you can just download those for free. And you just need to click Install to Chrome. Now, I've already got it installed, and you can see I've got it added to Chrome, but you just click that there. There is one verification step where you pop in your email, and then you have to put that code back in. They're not collecting emails or, or, or going to email you, but that's just a, an a anti-spam measure. The steps are fairly straightforward. I won't walk you through all of them. But once you've got that done, you just uh, open up your browser. Once again, you hit refresh, type in something, and you can even do this exact search if you want to see uh, the figures come up. Now, I want to explain some of the other terms here. You can see this term CPC and it is 0.31 cents of a dollar and competition down here as well. So what do these terms mean? They're actually not important for SEO. These terms are important if you wanted to advertise on uh, AdWords, Google AdWords. So for example, you can see an ad here and what this figure tells us is every time someone clicks on this ad, the advertiser or this company, Sensational Kids, .ie, is paying 31 cents per click. The competition is one, which means the competition is low. So there's probably not a lot of people advertising for this term, which could be a good opportunity. If there's not a lot of people advertising, you want to get in on this, then you can go ahead and do that. But what is interesting about this as CPC is if you see something like, uh, let's say, digital marketing course, we can see the cost per click is $5.83. So I know that these companies here are paying roughly that per every single click. Now what that does tell me and what is interesting from an SEO perspective, where we're trying to get to the top of the search results for free, is that that traffic is extremely, extremely valuable. If advertisers are willing to pay $5.83 for a click, if I can get to the top of the search results here and get all that traffic for free, then there's a high chance that uh, this traffic is going to convert to a sale. For example, if I type in something like uh, SEO tutorial, here's another example, we can see that the cost per click drops a lot. So maybe that traffic is not as valuable as if it was, say, even SEO course. Let's try that one, SEO course, so 183 versus yes yeah, 673 and the reason is because people searching for a tutorial aren't as serious as people who search for an seo course a course is something you enroll and pay for tutorials are generally not things that you pay for so you'll notice not only the search volume going up and down but also this cost per click and the key takeaway and what you need to understand about this metric is that just helps to indicate the value of the the traffic and how valuable this top spot on Google is. Now, obviously, it's going to be more competitive to get to the top spot, but you can still add in these keywords. If you see a really big cost per click, you're like, well, that's an interesting keyword. You can just add that to your list and uh, build up your list. So I hope you find um, that tool pretty interesting. I love using it. I have it installed every single day. It's just open there as I'm going through my searches, add it to my list. So go ahead now to keywordeverywhere.com. I'll put this link in the resources section of this lecture. You can just install it. It's free. It's really easy to use. And there's just so much value in using this. So I hope you enjoy it. And I hope already in this course that you are getting a ton of value 
from this free course. All right, so now that you have the keyword research tool installed, you're seeing the search volume in your browser here and you've started to build up a list of keywords. The next thing that you need to understand of which of these keywords can you realistically get to the front page of Google for? Now, initially your reaction might be, okay, I wanna to get to the front page of Google for a term like drones or whatever it is for your niche because that gets the most amount of searches. I can see here 1.5 million. Wouldn't it be great if I can get to the first page of Google for that? However, that is not the type of term that you wanna pick. Why? Because yes, it gets a massive amount of search volume, but that also means that it's gonna be very competitive that a lot of other websites are gonna to wanna to be on page one as well because it gets such a huge amount of search volume. And also those sites are probably gonna be much more established than you. They've been around for years. They've tons of backlinks already. So you really have no chance of getting to the front page of Google. So what do you have a chance of getting to the front page of Google for? Well, to explain this properly, you firstly need to understand the different categories of keywords. And here they are listed out. There are head keywords, body keywords, and long tail keywords. Now these might seem like unusual names, but they actually make a lot of sense. You can see that we have a graph here, and the top part of the graph is the head of the graph. And that is really the where one word keywords like logistics or drones are yes they get a massive amount of search frequency or search volume but they're also very very competitive because a lot of people are drawn in by the search volume now down here in the second part of the graph or the body of the graph you can see that the, there this is made up of two to three word phrases things like logistics management logistics management software so yes, these are going to have less search frequency, but they're also going to be less competitive, which means you have a better chance of ranking page number one. Now down here in the final part of the graph is the long tail. This makes up a lot of the total overall searches, and they are very descriptive search terms like logistics management, software, case studies, four or five word phrases, and I'm sure when you go into Google and you can't find something, you start to expand to a two, three word phrase and even get more specific with a four to five word phrase. Now, which of these type of keywords do you think you should try and target? Well, hopefully you're thinking already, okay, well, these long tail keywords don't have as much frequency, but they've also much less competition. So this is probably a good idea for me to really try and target. So let me give you another example to really bring this to life. Let's say that I was in the business of SEO. I had a course, I had a blog, I have services about SEO. This is just an example, but the same thing applies for any business. I might type in SEO and I go, great, it gets a huge amount of search volume. Let me try and get to page one for that. However, when I start to look down the search results here, I can see uh, moz.com, search engine land, Wikipedia, I can see some SEO companies locally here as well. And I can say, oh my God, these guys have been around for years. They're really big established players in the market. How am I ever gonna beat them? Let me start to look for a two or three word phrase. So I could put in something like SEO tutorial. Now notice here the search volume all is 673 and this is gonna drop considerably, considerably when I get the search volume for SEO tutorial. So I can see that this has 12,100 searches per month. It's gonna be a lot less competitive, and I can even see that some of the websites have changed here, not so much the big players anymore, um, but it's gonna be less competitive. Now, if I wanted to go down a level, get really down to this uh, long tail area, what I could do is come in SEO tutorial step-by-step, step, and it's, Google's even giving me suggestions of more refined searches, and I can see that drops down to 390 searches a month. So yes, it is going to be less search volume, but also it's gonna be much less competitive. So less search volume, it's a long-term keyword, but also much less competitive. And so what I recommend you really do is start to target these keywords 
in the long tail here. They have low search volume, um, but once you become a bigger site, you can start to move up this graph, start to target those two to three word phrases and even one word phrases. But what you want to do is really try and rank for a portfolio of keywords rather than one single term. So for example, you can see that here is the life hacker. This is kind of a well known uh, news side tips and tricks for mostly technical stuff. So yes, they are ranking on their on their homepage for their brand name life hacker. But you can also see that they've created keywords around um, one word keywords like this, I think it's kind of a technical thing. And also system and compressed memories, this is kind of a more body keyword. And then Raspberry PI projects another body keyword. And you can see that they have a portfolio of different terms that they are targeting and have created content around as well as just their brand name. And that's how they pull a huge amount of traffic into the into their website over all. So the key takeaway for, for you in this lecture is that your keyword strategy should be to target and uh, these longer long tail keywords, and also to build up a portfolio of keywords rather than one term. So have a look at your list and start to focus in on these longer term phrases. And you can even download these and start to highlight these with this keyword strategy in mind. We are now moving on to the next step in our SEO process on page optimization. And in this video, you're going to learn how to SEO optimize your home page for the search results. So you can really appear at the top of the search results when people search for your company name. So in order to do that, we're going to start by looking at a couple of examples. I've got three examples here, HubSpot, Udemy, and Backlinko, it's an SEO blog. We'll look at these three examples, understand the best practices, exactly what we're trying to achieve. And then I'm going to bring you into the back end of a website and show you how you update the key elements so you can really follow the steps for yourself. We'll do this for a website builder. It'll probably be very similar for a lot of your sites. And if you have a WordPress site, I'll show you the exact steps as well. So we're really covered no matter what type of website that you have. So let's have a look then at these search results here. The key things that we want to optimize are the title, which is this part here, and the description. These are the two key elements. So starting with the title, what are we really trying to achieve here? Well, we want to make sure that if someone types in our company name like HubSpot, that we're appearing at the top of the search results so that people when they search for a company online can actually find us here. So the way that you do this is make sure that your brand name is is right at the front of your title of your home page. So you can see HubSpot, HubSpot's right here. And then what you want to do for the rest of the title is in, include some keywords that you want to appear in the search engines for or that you want people to understand that your business is about. So you've got HubSpot, inbound marketing and sales software. If I even quickly open up a, another tab here, we can see inbound marketing. We'll search this. You can see that this gets over 60,000 searches a month. So they are trying to be known for this term. Um, and that's why they've included it in the title tag here. Now let's have a look at another example for the title tag Udemy. Once again, they want to make sure that they're appearing at the top of the search results when people type in Udemy. So they start their title tag off with Udemy. Then they've included online courses, which is another keyword that gets a lot of searches. And they've included some of the benefits, learn anything on your schedule. Now let's look at this final example, Backlinko. It's the name of the blog. It's appearing right at the front of the title tag. And again, some of the keywords that he wants to be known for SEO training, link building strategies. And both of these keywords, SEO training, link building strategies get good search volume as well. So that's the key thing for your home page. You want to include the brand name and some relevant keywords. Now you'll see that the length of this title tag, you want to keep it about 55 characters uh, any longer than that. And it's going to be cut off. So that's really the best practices for the title tag. 
Now the thing underneath here is known as the description or meta description. And once again, what you want to do here is include the brand name right at the start if you can. So HubSpot is a blah, blah, blah. And here you start to list out some of the a description of what the company does, what are the outcomes that I could expect to achieve if I click through. So we can see here HubSpot is an inbound marketing and sales platform. Again, these keywords reused that helps companies attract, convert, close customers. So these are the outcomes and that's a, an enticing description that makes me want to really click through and learn more. Now let's have a look at Udemy's description. Again, starting with the brand name in the description, Udemy is an online uh, teaching marketplace. And here they start to layer in some um, credibility indicators. So 45,000 courses, 15 million students. And that is something else that you can put in the description of your homepage so that when people see it in the search results, they can go, okay, these guys are serious. Or this is something that interests me to click through. Let's have a look at Backlinko now. It's time to get backlinks that make a difference. So this is really the outcome that they are saying that they can help you achieve. It's the place for next level SEO training. Again, those keywords reused from the title in the description. So that is really what you want to achieve. In terms of the description length, you want to keep it 155 characters or less, or else that is going to appear cut off in the search engines. You might see this a lot, it's like a dot, dot, dot. Okay, so now that you understand the best practices for the title tag and description for your homepage, how do you actually edit this on your own website? But what you need to do is go into the back end of your website, the admin area, and for a lot of website builders like Wix, Shopify, things like that, you're probably gonna see something like this. You just need to click around and find the buttons and that they really have resources to walk you through this step by step. But you can see here the page title, and this is where you really wanna put in the page title. So for example, I can just copy this in as an example and paste that in there. That's the page title done. Brand name plus a couple of keywords. Then you can come in here and uh, take your description. You can even do this outside of the tool and just paste it in there. Again, you can put in some of the keywords if that gives you that option there that's not really that important but that's the key thing you have to do it's fairly straightforward it's fairly simple now if you have a wordpress website there is a handy tool that you can use in your wordpress site what you want to do is come down into plugins in the dashboard here this might look slightly different for you because i've got a theme in my website but you can come down into plugins, that's gonna be there for everybody. You can come into the search bar, type in Yoast, and then download and install this plugin. I've already got it installed. Once you've got that installed, you can come down into the sidebar here. You're gonna see something like this, Yoast SEO. You can click on home page here, and here you can determine the title and description for your front page if you have one, or just your blog page. So I can just click to edit that myself. And then once again, down here, you're gonna see these fields that you can edit for yourself, title and description. So it's a fairly straightforward process once you see it being done correctly. What I would recommend is you follow the example of maybe HubSpot if you just want, want to pick one example to follow, but also have a look at some other competitors, other businesses like yourselves to see their titles, descriptions, see have they done them well? Is there any inspiration you could pick up from them and use them in your own examples. So now that you understand how to optimize your homepage for the search engines, go ahead and do it following the steps that you've learned in this lecture. In the last lecture, you learned how to SEO optimize your homepage for the search engines. And in this lecture, you're gonna learn how to SEO optimize any blog post for these search engines. Now the process is very, very similar, but let's firstly take a step back and remember why do we need to create blog posts in the first place? Well, remember that in the last lecture, you learned how to optimize your 
homepage around your brand name. But a lot of people aren't going to know your business initially, especially if you're small, so they're not going to be going into Google and searching for it. So that's why you need to create content around the keywords that people are searching for. For example, HubSpot here have created a blog post about how to, to make an animated GIF. You can see that they're at the top of the search results for this. And let's see, this gets about 1900 searches a month. So even if people aren't aware of HubSpot or who they are, they're still pulling in a huge amount of traffic from the search engines because they're at the top of the search results for keywords like this and also for a whole portfolio of other keywords. So it's the exact same strategy that you wanna do. Optimizing your homepage is not really enough. You need to create content and optimize around the keywords when you're creating that content. So we can see here that no longer in the title and the description of this page are those uh, brand name like HubSpot, HubSpot, that isn't relevant anymore because that's not the keyword we're trying to optimize around. The keyword that we're trying to optimize around is the keyword that people are searching for, very same as they were searching for here. So how to make an animated GIF, you can see this appears in the titles how to make an animated GIF in Photoshop, even picking up a longer tail search there. And you can also see in the URL of this page, how to create an animated GIF. And also you can see in the description of this page, how to create an animated GIF in Photoshop. So all of those keywords are appearing there. So the process is very much the same. It's not really any different. The main point that I want to highlight is that you do need to create content around keywords if you wanna get more traffic other than just from your brand name. And also the process is very much the same. You just need to optimize that title, have the keyword in the description as well. And there is one other thing you might want to optimize and that is the URL. So I just wanna show you quickly how to do that. Now for different website builders, this is gonna be slightly different. It's best to just look up the SEO resources for your particular website builder like Shopify, Wix, etc. But I'll show you here in WordPress how it works. This is uh, the website builder that most of you will probably be using. So let's say, for example, I just take this uh, keyword, how to, or I'll take this title, how to make an animated GIF in Photoshop. Now, as you can see here, the URL is how to create an animated GIF quick tip. So what I could do is really just paste that title in and then what will happen after a couple of seconds here is you can see the URL is being automatically populated and it's the same as the title here. So you just really wanna make sure that that is coming up as you want it to be. Uh, make animated GIF Photoshop. You can see that WordPress has already put in a really SEO friendly URL, but just make sure it's appearing as that and not a bunch of numbers or dashes or something that's not human readable. That's really all you've got to do. The title, you just want to make sure those keywords are there and the description, once again, you can edit that using your uh, Yoast SEO tool. Once you come into posts and click on add new, this is going to appear at the bottom of every single post. So you can edit the title and description in the URL using this tool right in the post itself or underneath it. So now that you understand why you need to as you optimize blog posts and how you can do it, go ahead and do it for yourself following the steps that you've learned in this lecture. We are now moving on to the final step in our SEO process, off-page optimization. And in this video, you are going to learn what a backlink is. I'm gonna show you specific examples of it, remind you why it's important and how you get them. And then I also want to give you a strategy that I've used for myself to get backlinks to my websites and it's perhaps the most effective strategy that I've come across for small businesses and use myself successfully. So I wanna share that with you. Now, first of all, what is a backlink and why is it important? Well, let's have a look at this example once again. We're typing in best desktop microphone into Google. And I can see that one of the top results here is from Lifehacker. And it's an article and a list 
of the best desktop microphones. So here they are all listed out. This is very standard, something you'd see on the internet every single day. Now what I have found here is a website that is linking back to this article. And this is an article from a different website, paltalk.com. You can see it talks about how to succeed on camera without really trying, it's a blog post. And you can see that down here they have a section on microphones that they recommend when you're recording videos. And in here they have a link or a back link to the same article on the uh, five best desktop microphones. So that's what a backlink is, it's just a link. You've probably seen this a thousand times, just the term is something maybe new to you. Now why is this person linking to the five best desktop microphone article on Lifehacker? Well, they don't wanna write a whole different article again about microphones that they recommend, so they're just linking off to an existing article and say, guys, you should go and, uh, and check this one out here. And that's exactly what they've done. So to why do people give backlinks? Because they just wanna refer their audience to a helpful resource like this article on Lifehacker. And the people who give the backlinks are actually other website owners. And when Google sees sites like this linking back to an article, and uh, a ton of other sites linking back, it says, whoa, well, if so many people are linking to it and really telling their audience that it's good, well, it must be good. And as a result, they rank you a lot higher in these search results. Now, the reason that Google uses these links as a metric for authority is because they have to sort out the search results. You can see when I type in best desktop microphone here that there are over nine, 184,000 relevant results. So they need a way to sort that. And the way that they sort that is based on not only relevance, like our on-page optimization, but also by authority, and that's using the backlinks. So that's the rationale for it. That's what a backlink is. That's why it's important. And that's why it's important to Google. And I think it's personally a very good metric and indicator of importance. Now, Let's talk about how you can actually get these backlinks. And one of the best strategies I think is to use what is known as the poster boy formula. And this is a formula that I've used myself many, many times. And you can see it here. This is an article that's featured on a website called My Site Auditor, but really it's an article written by me uh, where I'm the poster boy for their software. I'm saying, I have used their software, I've had such great results and I've generated 12,000 leads from it. And as part of that article, I've explained who I am and also link, linked back to my website. You can see here, this is a website for one of my other courses and that's the back link. So the reason that they agreed for me to publish this article is because I'm the poster boy for their business. I got amazing results out of their software. They want to tell their audience and promote that because that brings in more customers for them. It's essentially like a case study. And you can use this technique for really any tool that you use, even a microphone that you use, a camera that you use, a piece of software that you use, a partner that you work for, giving testimonials and case studies is just the best way to generate these backlinks because there's such an incentive for them to feature your content. It's much harder to randomly pick up links like this if you're just starting out. If you're at the, t if you're at the top of the search results already, then a lot of people are gonna link there because they'll just find you. But initially you have to do some work, be a little bit strategic and create content like this and then link back to your website it doesn't have to just be your homepage. You can link back to other resources that you've created as well. So that's an introduction to link building. It's quite a big topic, for, but for this SEO beginners course, I think that's enough to help you understand it. So now you understand what a backlink is and you have some ideas about how to create them. Go and think about how you can create them for yourself following the steps that you've learned in this video. In this video, I wanna show you how to protect your site 
from harmful SEO strategies. Now, in the previous lecture, we just talked about backlinks and some of the ways that you can create them. Now, you may have also come across articles or sites like this, Fiverr.com, where you can see the option to buy backlinks. And of course, this seems like the easy solution. Why create a ton of content when you can just buy something for $5 and get it done? Well, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And I would encourage you to be extremely careful about offers like this. Now, I haven't looked at all of these in a lot of detail, but I, if it's too good to be true, it generally is. And the reason that you need to be careful about this type of service is not only could it be just a waste of your money, but Google can actually penalize your site if it sees that you are artificially trying to rank a web page by manipulating a number of links pointing to a page. So Google did a big update to their algorithm where how they organize the search results. It's called Google Penguin. And this was designed specifically to target and punish sites that use services like this. So I would encourage you just to build them the normal way and earn them from reputable sites like I showed you in the last lecture, rather than use services like this. And I haven't looked at this in a lot of detail, but I mean, one of the giveaways here is maybe down here. When will I see results? You should see results within 60 days. So it's hard to understand why these reviews are five stars if they are not going to see results for 60 days. And uh, if you don't get results, you need to show proof. I think a lot of these business owners won't understand how to even show that proof or even how to measure that. And your site must be nine months old to see the results. So I think a lot of people who use this service have brand new sites and therefore um, they're probably not going to have a nine month old site. So I don't know, I haven't used this service, but I'm just warning you that uh, you can be punished if you lose, use services like this that are trying to manipulate the number of links pointing to a page. So my advice is stay away from this type of stuff and just use the normal link building strategies uh, to really rank your web pages. In this lecture, you're gonna learn how to rank a local business in the search results. Now, a local business is a business with a physical location and address where customers actually go into. Now, a business like this probably won't be creating a ton of content, and so backlinks aren't gonna be a big part of their SEO strategy. So how do they still appear at the top of the search results? The key thing is that they build authority, not through backlinks, but through reviews. So you can see I've typed in a local burger place here in Dublin, the city where I live. You can see we have the Google My Business profile, which shows the reviews. You can see you got the Facebook page, TripAdvisor down here, Yelp, and these other local review sites. So your SEO strategy as a local business is gonna be slightly different. You won't wanna create as much content and backlinks. It's more about building up these local business profiles and getting a ton of reviews on them. So for example, one thing that you should definitely do is just type Google My Business into Google. You can set up a business, walk through the process, set that up, and that's this thing here that appears in the sidebar. It's huge, it really, shows all the key information, so you definitely want to set that up. As well as that, you can just go on to TripAdvisor. You can list your business here so that people can start to leave reviews for you. You can do the same on Yelp, and you can also set up a Facebook page that allows you to give reviews as well. So that's just a quick note on local businesses. It's a slightly different strategy for the SEO, not so much content focused. You really build authority through these local review sites. Hi, it's Dara here again, and I just wanted to congratulate you for completing this SEO for Beginners course. Not everybody is gonna get this far, but you've really taken the time to invest in learning this valuable marketing skill that can deliver a lot of results for your business and also even help you get a highly paid job. 
So I just briefly want to talk about the next steps. I would love if you would share this free course with any friends or colleagues who you think it would be helpful for. I'm going to put a link in the next lecture or the lecture afterwards so you can just send this straight on. It's free. Over 50,000 people have taken this course. So if you think it'll be helpful to anybody, please do send it on. Now, if you want to get a deeper dive into SEO, I'd also recommend you take a look at my complete digital marketing course. I have a three hour section on SEO. And what we actually do is I walk you step by step through this 26 point checklist. We go into the more intermediate and advanced side of SEO, deal with all the technical stuff, the search console, speeding up your website, some great plugins and tools to improve your performance, much deeper process on keyword research, on page optimization, and a much deeper look into link building as well. All that stuff I think was too much to include in the beginner's course, but if you want to continue on, it's all there waiting for you. And I put a nice discount in for that course if you want to just even click through and check that out as well. So thank you very much for completing this course and for taking this course and finishing all the way through to the end. I hope to see you in one of my other courses.